Hello and welcome to Real Time Signals. Today we are going to discuss the main components of RTOS. Before we get into the main component of RTOS, we want to take a look at typical embedded system platform. An embedded system platform consists of hardware, BSP, RTOS and application code. Target hardware can be of 8-bit, 16-bit or 32-bit microcontroller with few KBs of internal memory. It depends on your application. Nowadays, ARM-based architecture is quite popular. You can have SOCs from NXP, Qualcomm, Broadcom or Texas Instruments. Or you can go for a smaller uh, hardware like Atmega or PIC. Board Support Package PSP which is an API for low level driver and return for hardware specific. So basically you can have a common RTOS. You can have a code of RTOS. Maybe it is a free RTOS or it is a ThreadX or it is VXWorks. You can have an RTOS as it is. You can compile the RTOS and you can write a board support package for the specific hardware. So only by changing your board support package, you can have a common RTOS code and you in down the line, if you want to port the same RTOS code and application code to another target platform, it will be very easy. By just changing the PSP, you can be done with it. Then RTOS, which consists of kernel, which is the heart of it library from CC++, file system, device driver, device IO, debugging facility, POSIX support and other components. We will talk about RTOS component in the next slide. For now, let's move on to typical application. This will have a specific code for your requirement, for the application requirement and it uses objects from kernel and other components of RTOS. Let's divide RTOS kernel into three categories, main three categories, scheduler, objects and services. Scheduler runs in critical part of OS. It gets chance on every tick cycle of OS. I will talk about tick cycle in next slides. Some of the common algorithms used in cellular are round robin, preemptive, and so on. It depends on what kind of RTOS you are using. And then based on that algorithm, you can choose depending on your application which one to go for. There are several other constructs available which can be allocated as objects from application of real-time embedded system. These objects are like, for example, task creation, semaphore, mutex, message queue, pipes, etc. And there are several services available in RTOS, which you can call from your application, like timer handler, interrupt handler, resource management, memory management, and so on. Now let's take a look of the same thing in a block wise. So here object scheduler and services. Scheduler is is one code which is the center of your RTOS. There are typical objects in any RTOS which I've listed down here. These objects will be taken by application to perform multitask and communicate between these tasks. Scheduler runs as part of the kernel and it consumes most of the CPU cycle which is about 2 to 5 percent. Scheduler determines which, run, which task will run next. A user can write an application which can create, which creates and spawn the task and can use message queue or pipes to communicate between the task or can use mutex to protect critical section of the resources. Apart from these components, there are services available. 
these services i have listed down here you can see timer management services interrupt handling services device management services memory management services and uh, these services can be called from your application one of the block which i really didn't mention here is called as task control block this is some people or i also consider it as part of scheduler a task control block is a data structure to maintain the state of a task when it is preempted when the task regains control of the cpu the task control block allows the task to resume execution exactly where it left off so when it comes back it will start from where it was left and this is called this is mainly context switching so in simple language you can say it is responsible for context switching where stack and other internal registers like program counters are stored and when when the execution comes back program counters gets updated and other internal registers and stack gets updated this is this is the figure which i wanted to show you in my presentation you can take a look at objects scheduler and services and in next videos i am going to show you how to use those objects how to create a task how to spawn a task how to use message queue to communicate between the task how to use event for a task or how to use a mutex or semaphore what is the difference between mutex and semaphore and uh, pipes and timer management services how we can call them all of it is coming in next videos thanks for watching